and welcome to my channel Drawers Patch. I am going to show you how I paint an apricot parrot tulip. This painting was originally a masterclass for Artist and Illustrators magazine for the April 2017 issue. And I had a few messages of people asking me, oh, can you make another video of the tulip? And fortunately, I had filmed some of it. Not all of it, but some of it. And I had filmed enough to make a video. So the video will be a mix of bits I filmed and a lot of pictures that I took while I was painting so that I could publish them in the magazine. Let's get started with a little bit of drawing. As you can see in this, I'm using quite a chunky pencil. It's a mechanical pencil, but I think it's something like three millimeters and it's a 6B lead. And the reason I'm using such a big pencil is that parrot tulips are very elegant, but they're also quite chunky. And I think I'm more likely to capture that chunkiness with a loose drawing with big pencil and then go in with the details to give the elegance with my washes of watercolour. And this is the drawing I ended up with after a few studies. And this is also my sketchbook page where I have written down all the colours I'm going to use. And these are the colours. So you can see I have a couple of yellows, um, a red, a pink, a magenta, my lovely peril and violet, a couple of blues, one green, and then a green mix, which I do with the green base and my blue and yellows. I start by mixing my harmonic shadow colour, which is quinacridone red, French ultramarine, neutralised with a little bit of permanent yellow, which gives me that beautiful clear grey that I'm going to use for all my shadows on the flower and on the foliage as well. After I have painted all my shadows wet in wet, my first job is to paint that flush of permanent yellow at the base of the petals because the pink and the apricot colours don't go right to the centre, they start a bit further up and if I don't put that yellow down first thing, there's a good chance I'm going to forget about it paint some pink too close to the centre and because permanent rose is a staining colour if I do this I can't lift it and then I've lost my yellow so it's a good job to do right at the beginning. After my yellow flush is safe it's a good time to start painting the first wash of pink colour wet in wet all over the petals and for this I actually have a little bit of a film As usual with my wet in wet, I start with quite a large brush, I think this is a number 8, and I'm putting water all over the petal, and then I start going in with the colour. This is Permanent Rose, which is the first wash I've done over the petals. It's called an apricot parrot, but really there is a lot of pink in it, and I think the reason it turns apricot is because that yellow, which is in the centre, is also flushed kind of randomly around the petals and obviously the yellow and the pink make a sort of pinky orange which is where the apricot comes from. But mainly the first wash is permanent rose. I'm dropping the colour in the water. The brush is a lot smaller this time, I think this is number three because I don't want to carry too much colour because when I put it down in the water it's going to spread in the water and I don't want it to go too far because I want to reserve my highlights so I don't want to flood the whole area with the pink. You can see I'm also going with different concentrations of colour. Where I paint over the shadows I dip my brush in the pink just before I go over the shadows so that it's more concentrated. Where I paint over the mid-tones there's slightly less paint on my brush by then and I'm trying to reserve the highlights as well. They're not going to be completely white, most of them, because the tulip is not 
very shiny but there will be just a very very pale wash of pink on them and then towards the tip where there is a bit more shine I'm reserving the white completely and then I'm going along the central vein as well one of the central veins para tulips well all tulips really I've got several parallel veins in the center and I'm strengthening these as well at the same time as painting my half petal. I'm doing half a petal rather than a whole petal because it just gives me more time to paint before it dries. If I was doing a whole petal at once, I might not have time to finish all of this and then it would start drying and make a mess. Here I'm using a flat brush to lift a highlight still while it's wet just to strengthen them a little bit. And I'm going to show you a series of photos, step-by-step -step photos of the progress on the tulip. So you can see that the pink washes are building up half a petal at a time. And this is a close-up where I'm dropping some quinacrinone reds into the pink while the pink is still wet. And then I'm dropping some permanent yellow as well while the two first colours are still wet as well. So they mix nicely straight on the paper rather than mixing on the palette. I've started introducing some green as well towards the end of the petals. Unusually I've used cerulean blue in my green mix. I don't usually use cerulean because it's an opaque colour, but for the tulip I have used it because the green is a bit milky, you know, almost chalky, so the a tiny bit of opaque colour in the mix, while not making the mix completely opaque because there isn't enough of it in the mix to make it completely opaque, the proportion is still too small. It does give that chalky appearance. And I have done the same thing for the leaf as well. You can see the cerulean there. It gives a bit of a silvery tinge to it, which is really nice and goes really well with the pink. And so a lot of pink flowers actually have that silvery tinge into their foliage. You can see on the stem as well that I've added more yellow to the mix because the stem is yellower than the leaf. And now it's time for a second wash. So as before, water over the whole thing. It's accelerated a little bit. I don't paint that fast normally, but it's quite a long stretch of video that one. So I thought I would speed it up a little bit to show you more of it, but in a shorter time. This is Permanent Rose again. I'm covering the first wash. If if the first wash is thin enough, when you put the water down, it shouldn't lift, especially not with permanent rose, which is highly staining. But even with other colours, it shouldn't lift anything because by now it's sunk into the paper. By the time I go round the flower, it's probably been a couple of hours since I did the first wash. So it's very dry and it's absolutely fine to paint on the top of it. I'm making the colour a little bit stronger, starting with covering the shadows again. And you see here I'm starting dropping some quinacridone red as well as some permanent rose. And you can see the variation in colour. I'm mixing them straight on the paper rather than mixing on the palette. I quite like to do this. I think it makes more lively washes. And I'm painting the whole of that petal, well the half petal and the central vein as well. So the central veins are going to be painted twice. They're going to be painted when I do the first half of the petal and they're going to be painted again when I do the second half. And I'm doing this because the central veins actually have stronger colour than the half of the petals. So by doing this I can actually naturally build up the colour on the central veins. And you can see here I've added some yellow as well. Again, I've dropped it in into the red onto the pink. So it's all spreading on the paper and that's going to give a very natural look. A bit of flat brush to make sure that my highlights are tidy. Again, while it's wet. This is what the tulip looks like after four or five washes, depending on the petal. And it's time to do a little bit of dry brush. I don't do a lot of dry brush work, but I do it to pick out some veins that show a little bit more than others. So I have quite concentrated pigment on dry paper 
small brush, I do a fine line and then straight away with a bigger brush, which is damp with just pure water, I go over the top of it to soften the edge of it a little bit. And then it's time to finish with the center. For the center I've used my shadow mix, dry brush again, just doing some dabbling with it to make it a bit fuzzy so it's not completely regular because these um, stamens are a bit powdery. And then a very slight green wash in the center and it's done. I hope that you enjoyed my video and I hope to see you again soon on my Flores Patch channel for another demonstration. Happy painting! Bye!